tell you a story. I was doing a keynote presentation and afterwards, uh, this guy comes up and says, Umar, I am the number one salesperson in my company. I earn a ton of cash. I've got a great life, but I've got a problem. So I was like, what's your problem? He says, my problem is, I know I could be doing so much better. There's another plateau of excellence and I'm just not getting there and it's frustrating as hell. So when we set up a time to actually meet, it was like, okay, tell me about a particular time that you were frustrated that you're not doing better. He says, well, it happens all the time, but a couple of weeks ago, I came home. I was in the car before I left the car to go into the house. I was just going, you know, what the hell's wrong with me? Why can't I get to the next plateau? I said, brilliant. In your mind's eye, go back to that very moment. Be in the car and see whatever you saw. The dashboard, the driveway in front of you. He says, okay, I'm seeing it. I said, okay, hear whatever you heard. The radio in the background, inner thoughts, whatever was happening here that now, he says, I'm doing it. When you do those two things, you get to re-experience what you were feeling. What were you feeling when you were fretting about not doing better? And he goes, huh, that's weird. I, I, I was feeling an uncomfortable feeling right here and I'm feeling it now. I said, great. You see that feeling that you're getting links to a belief that you got at a previous time. Because if I had asked him, have you felt this feeling before? He would have gone, not sure. If I asked about, you know, what's the belief stopping you from performing at a higher level, it would have been, I have no idea. But using this tool, linking this feeling to his unconscious mind that records everything, instantly he goes back to a memory. He says, oh my God, I was about eight or nine years old and my family went to a restaurant and before the waitress came to take our order, dad turned to us kids and pointed at me and said, remember, don't order steak, we can't afford it. And in that moment, it created a belief around self-worth and his relationship with money. And even with that limiting belief, he's the number one salesperson in the company, but each time he thinks about doing better, that uncomfortable feeling comes up. So we know that belief that he got from a childhood memory is blocking it. If you have an event that happens that has a lot of emotions tied to it, humans are meaning making machines and we make a belief out of it. And the belief doesn't go in our conscious mind, the belief goes in our unconscious mind underneath the surface and it starts controlling the way we see the world and how we show up in the world. So for him, he's got a belief around money and self-worth. Using a branch of uh, psychology called applied neuroscience, we change the belief, send him on his way and a couple of weeks I get a call from him saying, Umar, I'm not sure what the hell you did, but my passion, my drive, my will to succeed is all of that's off the charts. And so that's what I want to talk to you about is that in our society, we think change is hard, change is difficult. If it's ever going to happen, it's going to take a really long time to do it. And I'm here to tell you that change happens. It happens in a moment. And you know, this is true because somewhere in your life, you had a belief that was stopping you from executing and you just decided one day, damn it. Remember that movie network? I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore. We get one of those moments that changes something fundamentally within us and the world changes around us. We have a set of rules that we use to navigate through life. And when something challenging happens for you, another rule kit comes in, another rule set comes in that allows you to be spectacular. And for other people, the rule kit that would come in is disaster. People are gonna think I'm a fool. And so the question is, you know, what if we could get that same rule set to come in when you were in a family situation or in another situation where you don't show up as spectacularly well? But we all have examples of when we, you know, walked on water and did this spectacular thing. And that just shows you that there's a better you inside you. And the question is, how can we get that you to come out? The enemy is the fear that comes up that gets in the way. And the question is, where, where does that fear come from? And where that fear comes from is from our past, right? So we get 95% of our beliefs by the time we're seven. And notice that uh, when we're about seven-ish, six-ish, seven-ish, our adult teeth come in. So that's when we go from the theta state, when we're just sponges that just learn everything around us, because that's the only way we could accelerate. We're the only species that when we're born, we're helpless for years. But at seven, we get the ability to be more discerning on what we let in. From seven to the time we die, we get another 5% of beliefs. And a lot of beliefs we get 
are when something emotional happens, we get positive or negative beliefs. And we also develop our comfort zone. And our comfort zone lets us know what's possible for us and what isn't possible for us. And our parents designed that comfort zone for us accidentally because all they wanted for us was for us to survive. And so when we're sitting with our parents and we're two or three and we're playing with toys and parents are talking and watching TV, everything is going well, it's a great family experience. And then we're about to put something sharp in our mouth and our parents freak out because they go into fight or flight mode. My kid could be killed and they go, no, bad. And as soon as they do that, it's startling and it's scary. And the people that are designed to help us and love us and care for us all of a sudden are not. What do we remember as kids? Do we remember that loving three hours we spent with them? Or do we remember that two minute interchange where they were angry and yelling at us because we did something wrong and that creates fear. And the fear that's created, we label, we're meaning making machines that that is a reason not to do anything. We were about to do something bad and fear comes up and we're trained by our parents, not on purpose, but that fear and being stopped and we are trained by our parents that fear means stop, hunker down, protect yourself, run away. When in reality, what fear is, is the energy to do our best. And so one of the things we need to do is, is to relearn what fear means. Fear means that we've got the energy to be our very best selves. And the reason we can't learn it just automatically is because we have beliefs around that fear. And those beliefs are like a black hole of gravity that are hidden away in our unconscious. And all we're aware of are the behaviors that we we do. And it's like, I don't want to do this behavior. I read a book that fear is the very energy I need to change things. And we can't change that behavior because underneath is a belief that fear means shut down. And what we need to do is take a journey within. A second emotion that our parents use is, is guilt and guilt is anger at ourselves. So we were with the family, we we're having a great time. And then we were about, we did something that was dangerous and our parents got really, really angry. And so what guilt is anger directed at ourselves. And what that does is that, uh, it shuts us down. We blame others for it or we blame ourselves. We feel bad about it and it shuts us down and all along what guilt is, is the energy for personal change, for personal growth. And once again, guilt, we're trained to shut us down when it's the very thing we need to have personal growth and to and show up in life in a bigger way. All of that leads to unworthiness. And we feel that in the solar plexus, you just blow our heart. And that really is, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm undeserving. I'm inadequate. And it's the most hideous of emotions that controls us and just that word hideous means it's the most hidden sometimes we don't even realize that we're unworthy but our friends and our family can go oh my god you could do so much more do you realize you're using this language so unworthiness really is a way for us to stay on the path because when you feel unworthy if you ask yourself what would i need to do to be worthy an answer pops up and that allows you to move forward and all of that stuff creates hurt feelings and we feel hurt in our heart and hurt feelings lead to anger at ourselves. It leads to, uh, to sadness, to loss, to grief and to cover up our hurt feelings. We get angry. I can't believe my boss did this. My wife did this. COVID did this. And when you get angry, if you ask yourself, well, what do I really care about that? It gives you the, when it shows you're caring and it gives you the energy for change because our beliefs dictate our behaviors and our behaviors give us our results. So the question is, how can you get better results? And it all comes down to how do we decode our beliefs? And there's beliefs that we have that are spectacular, that allow us to show up in life in a powerful, amazing way. But there's some beliefs that get us to show up in a weak way in life where we limit ourselves, where we sabotage ourselves. And I think our journey as human beings, as leaders, as parents, is to uncover those limiting beliefs, make peace with it, so we show up in a more powerful way.